All right. So in this question, um, you're going to want to obviously start with what you got to do. So um, it might be good to say a little bit about what even the whole kind of question about a right to profit means. So you might want to give some sort of uh, example about like um, other companies, you know, where it's easy to understand why they have a right to profit. So uh, remember, I used to use the example like the aluminum company, you know, they have a right to the stuff they dig out of the ground, they own it, they can process it, they, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just to kind of frame the question. You don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but maybe just a little bit would probably be good. Okay. So uh, what you want to do here then is give the sort of best argument, which, you know, is probably your sort of um, uh, Lockean type. I can't spell. And this isn't very neat writing anyways. Uh, but you probably want to follow Sachs just because that's what we, we did. And that's because... You know, you can actually look at the Sachs article and have somebody to work off of. So you want to probably explain the Kersner type view, right? So the Lockean, remember, um, you don't have to do both of these, right? The old school Lockean, which is Sachs some, for some reason doesn't think works very well. Um, but if you think it works better, you can set it out and maybe explain why it works better. Uh, but the Lockean, remember, it, it all has to do with kind of like your work or your labor, uh, to some extent. And then the Kersner view is kind of like, uh, you're just using your smart brain, right? You, you're finding, uh, a market opportunity or something like that. So whatever it is, um, you want to just spell that out, uh, in order to explain and then explain why that justifies, uh, uh, the company, you know, profiting from the novel insights. Right. And then, uh, I think what I what I'm calling Sachs's objection. If you look at the paper, he's got several, but uh, this is really the one we talked about in class. You can go a different way if you want, but uh, the one we talked about in class was the one that had to do with uh, personal data, right? And that came from uh, Flirty, you know. And the the idea is basically if you know the que the the question was you know sort of can it be uh, separated from the person. The per Gosh, my writing is bad this morning, sorry. Uh, and, you know, there was sort of two reasons to think that it couldn't be. There was the uh, sort of technical side, right? That was just about, you know, the difficulty of uh, anonymizing data sets. And then there was, okay, I guess this side, the 40 side, which is, you know, the, the sort of more metaphysical claim that the person and their data can't be separated, right? So if you go that way, and this is probably the way you want to go, right? Because that's the one that we talk the most about. Um, you want to explain why the non-separability of the person and their data actually matters, okay? And then whatever you've done, you know, this is task number three, right? You know, respond to the objection. So uh, just to summarize, number one, your, oops, task number one is to give a little bit of framing. You know, on the in-class exam, I didn't want you to do any. Here, you can probably spend like a short paragraph doing it, um, but don't go overboard. It's, th that's the sort of thing that can be tempting to uh, go overboard on. Don't do that. So number one, just kind of set out a little frame and then get going, right? Uh, number two, spell out the Lockean or probably more likely the Kersnerian view um, as best you can. Um, you know, fill in any gaps that you, that we left in lecture and, uh, then, you know, sort of explore, uh, Sachs's objection. Uh, oops, this should have been, duh, three, four. Although usually what I mean by when I say finally respond to the objection, I mean, you know, you go back and forth just a little bit. So these, you, these two are usually mixed up, even though I like to put them separately, just to remind you to do it separately. Okay. So you gave, did the framing, you set out the argument, um, then you set out an objection and then you do your response. And this part again can be kind of back and forth. And, you know, um, I'm just looking for what, you know, you think, the problems are here and just make the best case you can. All right. Sound good.